Hi, it's Laura at Aquamarine 18. Thanks for stopping by and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am here with the second half or second installment of video sharing the complete tarot deck collection uh, as of now of mine. So this is every tarot deck that I have ever owned, um, the two videos combined, because I have yet to ever um, trade a deck, for example, or to sell a deck, which is not to say I never will, but it just hasn't happened quite yet. Um, so I shared 21 decks in the first video earlier today, and for this video I'll be sharing 30, which means I have a total of 51 different decks in my collection, which I just learned actually today. Um, and it's, it's right around what I, what I thought it would be. Um, so I said 51 distinct decks. Um, some folks will know if you saw my hashtag tarot disaster video, um, that when I had a deck of mine, the heart and hands get damaged from um, rainwater on a windowsill, I replaced that deck um, and trimmed the first one. So I do actually have two of that deck, um, but that's my only, um, that's the only case in which I actually have the identical deck, um, two copies. Like my copies are obviously not identical because one got screwed up, but um, yeah, those are, that's the only double I have. So I have 51 um, distinct decks in my collection. And so I, I divided them at least just roughly um, between sharing the um, mass market, widely available um, in-print decks in the prior video. And so this video I will be sharing um, independently produced decks, decks that I've bought directly from their creators or that I've backed on Kickstarter, for example, as well as the couple of out-of-print or rarer decks that are in my collection as well. Um, so 30 decks total. I will list them in the order I share them down in the box below. Um, if you own any of these decks, if we have some favorites in common, uh, let me know. Do uh, share in the comments and I'm enjoying um, watching other folks' videos of their um, tarot shelves and oracle shelves as well. So without further ado, I will get into the second half of my tarot deck collection as of today, December 31st, 2019. So the first deck I'll show is the Melanated Classic Tarot, inspired by the Rider Waite Smith by Julia Goolsby and Ubria Tronshaw. And as the name of the deck suggests, this is a Melanated Tarot deck based on the Rider Waite Smith, featuring diverse people of color throughout the deck. And I really like the colorations of this deck. Um, in terms of the backgrounds as well. I like, um, you know, the, the coloring that they've done, the, the kind of blending of the background. I really, really like. Um, if you can see, for example, in this Empress card, um, the blending in the, in the trees and the sunset. I really like that. And I really liked um, something that the creators put on the outside of the box, which it says there, I'm not sure if you can read it, representation matters, especially with archetypes of magic and power. And I agree, representation matters. And I was really happy to um, get a copy of this deck. Um, I'll show the back here, it's like that. Um, it is a thinner card stock, but they have held up well to shuffling. Um, I do wish it was a little bit thicker, particularly um, there's quite a bit of space in the box you can see, um, or that maybe the box was smaller, I'm not sure. Um, but I've really enjoyed working with this deck, and I will also just add the, the little guidebook um, for this deck is really excellent. Um, it, it presents the um, astrological associations of the different cards in ways that I have never seen them um, communicated before. And it was a really interesting read that I have returned to um, many times to explore. And now I'm having trouble getting it back in the box. I say that there's tons of space in the box and then I can't get the thing back in. Okay, <laughs> there we go. So that is the beautiful Melanated Classic Tarot by Julia Goolsby and Ubria Tronshaw. The second deck that I will share is a deck that I actually bought um, in person right from the, the creator at a um, kind of arts 
fair, I guess, or arts market um, in Toronto. And that's the Marigold Tarot, which is created by Amrit Brar. Uh, the back of the box says a tarot deck rooted in life, death, and gold. And there's a couple, I believe, of different versions of this deck. Um, I got the version that has gold gilding. Here's the back with the marigold, of course. And this is a deck that is full of skeletons. Um, there's a lot of plant symbolism in this deck. Um, I wouldn't say that it is a strictly speaking pip deck, but some of the miners are quite um, pip-like. And this is a deck that I have worked with a lot. Um, it comes, it doesn't come with a paper guidebook, but um, when I bought the deck, you get a piece of paper um, where you can download a guidebook um, for free. And it, the guidebook talks about the different um, specific plants being chosen, for example, for particular cards, um, for particular reasons. There's a lot of hands in this deck as well. Um, rings are the renamed pentacle suit. And the cups are represented by these open skulls. I really love this deck so much. Um, and I'm really glad I was able to get it in person. That was really uh, nice. And what I did, instead of printing out the whole guidebook, I just kind of condensed the information down into a small um, kind of bullet point version just to save on ink and paper that I keep in the, in the box. Um, but it's a great intuitive reader as well, even if you don't know all of the plant symbolism. So that is the Marigold Tarot by Amrit Brar. And um, Amrit Brar on her, on her website has some um, different patches and things that are really, really awesome. And I would love a patch, a back patch in particular. That might be something that um, joins my <laughs> fashion sometime soon. The third deck I will show is a Rider Waite Smith system deck that many will know. The Darkness of Light Tarot, which is by Tony DeMauro. And I ordered this deck from the creator. I have, I believe, the second edition. There are a couple of different editions. I think he's now on the third, and that I have the second. So my edition is the one with the borderless sides, but with the black um, bands at the top and bottom. This is a very beautiful deck. The major arcana are in Italian. And their paintings. I also have um, Tony created a um, hard copy guidebook to go with this deck. This feels like in some ways quite a wintry deck to me with the uh, color palette as well. Though there's a little bit almost of color coordination um, or color coordination, color coding, color coordination in the um, different suits, a little bit. Um, like the wands have quite a bit of these kind of um, pink, pink and greeny tones. I like the cardstock of this deck. It's um, it's matte and it's it's thick but not too thick. I almost this deck almost got lost in the post and I was quite stressed about it um, because of a mistake. They had stuck a sticker over top of my postal code, um, so it almost got lost. But and so I had to email. I emailed Tony in a bit of a worry, like, "Oh my deck, the tracking says it's missing." Um, it did end up turning up, um, but Tony was very, um, very good about it when it looked like I might need to get another deck, which I really appreciate. So that is the Darkness of Light Tarot. Next, the deck that I already mentioned, um, the Heart and Hands Tarot, which is by Liz Blackbird. I'm only going to show one copy of this deck because aside from my like screw up and then modification, they are the same. 
Um, so this is my modified trimmed after a water accident version of the deck. Um, this is the back of the deck. And this is one of my first ever indie um, tarot decks as I was discovering the world of, um, you know, the the wide world of independently produced tarot decks. And this is a this is one that I found on Etsy, um, and it's all black and white, which is something that I really enjoy. Some folks will know. I can imagine getting a tattoo inspired by this. Um, style. The, I find the, um, the court cards sometimes look like celebrities to me in this deck. I love the aces in this deck. I think this ace of wands just says everything that I want an ace of wands to say in terms of kind of a seed of, of creativity and um, passion and beginnings of growth and, and fire and like everything about it. I love this. So there's, of course, based on the name, there's lots of hands in this deck. And so that's my only, my only double is my, is my two copies of this one. And I keep it in here with the little pamphlet that came with it because it no longer fits the tuck box. <laughs> so that's the Heart and Hands Tarot by Liz Blackbird. Next, a deck I just showed recently for my um, Year Ahead spread, which is a deck that many, many, many will be very familiar with, and that is the Light Sears Tarot by Chris Ann. I don't keep it in the box um, because I don't really like when the box splits the deck into two piles. Um, I find that no matter how much you know I combine them, I always feel like it's a little bit divided. I don't like dividing it into two to put it away. But I have the... Um, First edition, um, like independent edition. I backed this deck on Kickstarter. Um, it's the only deck of Chris Ann's that I that I have, and I really like the the art style in this deck. I like the color palette of this deck. I like the way that she's represented the suits as well. And the teal edging, I mean, never seen a deck with something like that before. And I just, it goes with the back so perfectly. I just love that. I'm going to have to make um, a drawstring bag or a box to keep my light sears tarot. And I'm not sure what I'll use for that yet. But I do love making a drawstring bag. And I have made one for this deck. And if you've watched my channel before, you may know which deck I'm going to pull out, which is a deck that was new to me this year. And this is the Numinous Tarot. It has a, a gold gilding. Here's the back. And the Numinous Tarot is created by Noel Arthur Heimpel. This is an extra card, the Numinous. And I love the Numinous Tarot um, for its inclusivity and diversity. It's super queer, which I love. Um, it's very colorful, which I love. Um, it'd been out for a while before I got it. Um, it's a bit of a different art style for me. Um, very contemporary, almost um, a graphic novel um, type of illustration. Um, but this deck reads really well and I love to, to work with it. It's such an effortless um, deck to read with for me and the guidebook is excellent I really love this deck and I'm so glad that it's in the world so that's the Numinous Tarot by Noel Arthur Heimpel and I'm not sure if there are more editions of this deck I, I doubt I have the first edition if so but I'm not sure if they're any different actually Okay, next up, you may know which tarot deck this will be um, since it has its publisher's name right on the bag and I have some extra goodies in here so I'm going to be careful. This is the Pagan Otherworlds Tarot published by Usi, and I have the second edition 
and I open it from the bottom so I don't break the sticker. And Usi, like the box, everything about Usi decks is just amazing. And so this deck is an interesting, um, it's not really Rider Waite Smith, but it's not really Pip either. Um, I know for some readers, like that is a bit um, of a negative, like it's, it's slightly Rider Waite Smith, but slightly Pip and you know, it's a bit of a hybrid. It can be, so it could be, be a bit of confusing, um, depending. But I really like reading with this deck. I mostly read with it like a pip deck. It's very um, kind of Renaissance painting feeling. I like the handwritten card titles a lot. Um, it's a kind of linen finish with a beautiful back and folks will probably know that um, Usi prints um, a lot of playing cards and things like this so their, their stock and their um, packaging and that is all just really really excellent. And I have, I mentioned I had some extra goodies in this um, bag. They came out with these and I ordered them um, some foil moon cards. There are moon cards with Pagan Otherworlds, but um, by ordering these extra foiled ones, that means you could have like one of each moon phase, both waxing and waning. So I did get those cards and they send them in a little pouch with a little petal. Um, on it like that. So that is the Pagan Otherworlds Tarot. I know it's uh, it's ma it's in many people's favorites that deck. Next up, this is I'm fairly sure out of print, but like I'm not hundred percent sure, but I'm fairly sure it is. Um, this is the Nomad Tarot by Jennifer Drantel. And this is a deck that I believe was Kickstartered. I didn't back it on Kickstarter. I actually bought this deck from um, Little Red Tarot Shop. And I liked a lot of things about it. I like that the back is kind of like a tie-dye. Can't go wrong with a tie-dye. And the suits are elemental. So the earth suit is represented by crystals and it's a pip deck. So you can see the crystals there. The water suit is represented by shells or cup, so cups would be shells. There's a lot of animal depictions in the major arcana. The air suit or swords is represented by feathers. I really when I, something that I loved when I saw this deck as well um, was the idea of of a chicken. Um, being strength, I, yeah. So we have shells for water, feathers for air, and moths for fire. So you can think of like moths um, drawn to a flame. It's also a, a linen-y cardstock, shuffles really well. Um, and it came with this bag that I keep it in. Um, there's also a Nomad Tarot book, which I bought. That, um, I bought it on Amazon, actually. It was sold separately, and I have to say it's not my favorite tarot guidebook because it doesn't really say anything about why the artist chose or the creator chose the different imagery um, that she did, which is quite untraditional. So I wish that there was a bit more, um, you know, more on that. But I really do love this deck, and it's nice. It's, a, it's actually a very, very navy um, dark blue and white, which is, which is different. Next up, a deck I found on Etsy. And this one is the Tarot of Trees. Probably a lot of folks have seen this deck, Tarot of Trees. And it is by Dana O'Driscoll. And I have the third edition of this deck, and it's a quite tiny um, it's almost like the size of the tin decks, maybe it's slightly bigger than the than the US Games tin decks. 
I edged this deck in a very, very dark green, um, which goes, I felt, well with the backs. And so this is another deck that's a bit, um, it's a little bit Rider weight and a little bit Pit. And of course, it's all trees. The, um, the cardstock is a bit glossy for my preference, but it does shuffle well. Um, and I'm really drawn to plant and tree based decks, but I don't have many of them. This may actually, I think this is the only one because, because I don't know a lot about plants or herbalism or anything like that. I always feel like there's kind of a barrier to entry for me with a lot of plant, uh, plant based or tree based decks. And this one, I, I don't feel that way at all. This is um, quite straightforwardly a, a tarot deck. And if you're familiar with, for example, Rider Waite Smith's system, this is a deck that you can readily work with. And I think it's um, a really clever deck in terms of how it conveys, for example, um, Rider Waite Smith's system meanings without having people in the cards so if you can get the sense of desolation that comes with the Rider Waite Smith five of pentacles without having to have people outside a church for example the three of swords is, is fairly literal um, you know the fool tree leaning off a cliff yeah and I really like the color palette of this deck as well so that is the Tarot of Trees by Dana O'Driscoll. A little mini deck. Next up, a deck that I got and backed on Kickstarter. And this was earlier this year. We probably know it by the bag. I have a full walkthrough of this deck, so I won't spend too much time here. This is The Way of the Panda Tarot by Kimberly Anson, drawn by Celia LaBelle. And this is just a lovely deck. Um, I don't usually go for kind of anthropomorphized animals or like animals with human made props and clothing and things like this, but this deck is so sweet. Um, the artwork is beautiful. Who could resist a panda in a bow tie? The colors are great. The extra book, the book, um, the book of the pandas is is excellent. This deck could make a great first deck for someone, I think, who's interested in in animals. And the cardstock is great. Here's the box. Or, sorry, the box. Here's the back of the cards, not the box. And this deck is, is very much still in print. I believe that maybe it was the green box that was Kickstarter specific and now it's a blue box or something like that. But um, And there was some extra cards um, as stretch goals on the Kickstarter. But other than that, I believe the deck that is still available is the same. And that is the Way of the Panda Tarot by Kimberly Son and Celia LaBelle. Next, another. Um, there's a couple of animal-focused tarot decks here in a row. This is the Considerate Cat Tarot. And this one is by Madeleine Belanger. And it is actually, believe it or not, the only cat deck in my entire collection, which means I have more cats than I do cat decks. One thing that bugs me about this deck is that the box does not have the little finger spots. So it can be a bit hard to open, but there's a nice ribbon to get the, um, the deck out. And a portion of the um, proceeds from this deck go to supporting um, cat rescue um, work, which I really love about this deck. And I know that Madeleine Belanger, the creator, is um, like fosters, um, fosters cats as well which is such like important work and we need um we need to all be um, doing you know work to to support our our animal 
um, friends that we share the earth with, right? So I love to be able to do that um, with a deck. And the artwork in this deck is just, it's beautiful. It's soft. Um, it's all kind of pastel colors. And in an extra guidebook you can buy to go with this deck, um, you could meet a lot of the cat um, models for this deck who are themselves uh, rescue cats. And all the rescue cats have, have a story, right? Um, so that's a really nice um, addition as well. There are some cards in this deck that I feel like the pictures are a little bit detached from the, from the card meanings in some ways. Um, but generally, this is just a beautiful deck. Um, and, you know, any cat lover, um, I'm sure, would love the considerate cat tarot deck. And I got this, um, this pouch um, from the creator as well. I believe this was a Kickstarter, but I didn't back it on Kickstarter. I just ordered it um, after the fact. So it's a Considerate Cat Tarot by Madeleine Belanger. Next up, a deck that I got this year, and I learned about this deck from a fellow Tarot Tube um, creator, Corey and Green, on their channel, um, did a walkthrough. And that's the Tarot of the North Atlantic. And this deck just called out to me absolutely immediately for a few reasons. One is that it's a water-themed deck. I'm a Pisces, like any water-based deck. Here's the back. And something else cool about this deck is the medium, which it's all um, stitched and embroidered with beads. So those are beads. Um, the bones are the fire suit. Let's see if it will focus here. So you can see this intricate work that went into this deck. And this was, I believe, a Kickstarter deck too, but I missed it. And then it was, it's on, um, is it Make Playing Cards? It is, it's Make Playing Cards that this deck is on now. So you can get it there. It's by Lee Thompson. But this is all stitched, there we go. So this is stitched with different um, beads and things. Shells is the water suit attached. And so as someone who cross stitches and sews as well, I can really appreciate the, the intricacy and the amount of work that goes into a deck like this and I think it's really unique. I haven't seen a lot of other decks like this one. I haven't seen any other decks with a medium like this um, in terms of embroidery and stitch work. And so between that and the, the water theme, this was a deck uh, that really, this is, the, this is the most impulsive deck buy I think I've ever made in my life. Like Corvin showed it. And it was like, how do I get, how do I get, how do I get this deck? Um, this deck is, you know, me all over the place. Um, Tarot of the North Atlantic by Lee Thompson. And I'm so glad that I, that I found it. Next animal based deck is one that a lot of folks will probably be familiar with. And one of my favorite decks in my collection, the Anima Mundi Tarot created by Megan Weirweden. I hope I said your name right. Um, who is the Creeping Moon on Etsy, which is where I got this deck. Also the creator of the Nocturna Oracle as well. And so this is a animal-based deck. It's got a kind of linen finish. It has a gold guild. And here's the backs. And I like this deck because I feel like the choice of animals in this deck really like readily matches um, with the associations of the cards. So like an eight of pentacles that I'm sure I'm not alone in associating the eight of pentacles, for example, with work and having beavers building a dam there. It's, it really just makes sense um, right away. I think this is one of the most stunning moon cards I've ever seen. You know, it's so sparse in a way. Um, but just so evocative as well. Yeah, 
know, the four of pentacles, you can think of the raccoon kind of saving up food for the winter. Seals, so playful for three of cups. Hardworking bees for the, the three of pentacles, which a lot of us might think of um, like teamwork or working together for that card. So it really made, like, makes sense, and I really like that about this deck. So that is the Anima Mundi Tarot. Okay, I'm going to just shift the stacks over here for a second. Okay, I'm trying to keep tidy here. <laughs> the next deck is a deck by a publisher that probably many folks will know makes amazing decks. And that's Il Metagello, and it's my only Il Metagello deck. And that's La Corte de Tarocchi, and it's by Anna Maria Donofrio. It is a very interesting deck, uh, Marseille style. I have deck number 288 out of 400. These are the backs. I thought that the fact that the back had the name of the deck on it would really like weird me out, but it actually doesn't when I work with this deck at all. This deck is massively thick <laughs> and very long and thin. And there's something very um, charming about the figures in this deck. And it is a recent, uh, a recent deck, though it doesn't really look like one. But I love the faces in this deck. The cardstock is like the thickest I have ever come across. And so it's of course a it's a Marseille style pip deck. And Il Manigello makes amazing, um, for the most part, um, reproductions of historic decks and. Um, and things like that. They've got, um, I think they've got Sibylla decks and different things like that. This is the only deck of theirs I have, but wow, um, the, the quality is mind boggling. It comes with a wax seal on there. So that's La Corte de Tarocchi by Anna Maria D'Onofrio. Another, um, well, not another. This one actually is a, is a historic reproduction. And this is a reproduction of the Jean Noblet tarot. This particular reproduction was done by Joseph H. Peterson. Um, I'm not sure how widely available this deck is actually. I bought this deck at a shop called The Hermit's Lamp in Toronto um, because I wanted to have a historic reproduction deck. And so this deck comes with a little um, explanation card inside explaining that this oldest tarot survives in a single deck only preserved in the Bibliothèque Nationale de France dated 1659 produced in Paris by Jean Noblet and it this um, details some of the features of it and so it notes that missing cards six and ten of swords have been carefully reconstructed um, and the artwork has been preserved as much as possible um, there are actually two copies of the Magician in this deck because one of them has, this one has, it appears to have the wand perhaps um, broken or rubbed off. So there's one with the longer one. And I like this deck because, you know, a lot of, a lot of Marseille style decks um, like this will have um, almost like primary colors, you know, like really bright. Um, and this one doesn't. This one preserves a kind of aged, uh, an aged look about it. And so for a Marseille style deck, I think that this deck is really beautiful. I love the coloration in this deck. Uh, the cardstock is a little bit glossy, but I actually really like the cardstock in this deck. Um, it has um, quite a few, I think, of the older decks. Um, you can see it does not have um, the rounded corners there fully squared. So that is the 
well, it just says Terra de Marseille on the box. Um, in my head, I refer to it as the um, Jean Noblet reconstruction by Peterson um, because that, that captures it for me. Uh, so it's the, it's the yellow box. Next up, another Marseille style. And many of you will have seen this one. This is the Triumphi della Luna by Patrick Valenza. And I have the paradoxical classic version in the English text. Um, I don't have I don't have the non paradoxical. Um, but folks will have seen these images before. We know Patrick Valenza is the creator of the deviant moon. So it has some of that deviant moon personality but in a Marseille style deck. And this deck is a, is a quirky one. I really like the, the personality of this deck as well. Um, if you want to have a Marseille deck that feels um, contemporary, you know, and different, can't go wrong with the Triumphi Della Luna. And there's lots of editions, so there's like, there have been, I believe there's a French edition. I would have loved to get the French edition. Um, I believe there's been an Italian one. There's paradoxical, non-paradoxical. There's different colors, um, all with, I think, similar moon backings. So this one is the paradoxical classic. Um, I'm not sure which ones um, are available now, but there are many neat um, variants of this deck, the Triumphi della Luna. Okay, next up is another uh, Marseille style deck. This one, um, I made this box out of paper and cardboard um, for the deck. Um, I have some homemade boxes here for decks that came in um, like larger boxes with big guidebooks um, just to make them fit on my very shallow shelf better. And this one, I'm not really sure if this is like a quote-unquote mass market deck like or how widely available this deck is as a French deck. And this is Le Terre Noir, and it is edged in gold. The backings have this um, rose on it. It's fairly glossy. This is a huge deck. Like this is all, this is the size of the next world. Um, and I really like the kind of figures in this deck. There, there's a slight Tim Burton-y style um, to the faces and the animals in this deck, um, but it is a Marseille style deck. Um, I just, I, I like the faces in this deck so much. Um, the titles are of course in French. Um, Le Terre Noir, of course it's in French. Um, and the book is also in French. Um, exclusively. Um, I did read some of the book. My ability to read French is, is okay. Um, but the book fell apart really quickly. The binding on the book was not great. That is my only um, quibble, I guess, about this deck. But that's Le Terre Noir. I got this deck on um, Abe Books, um, but I've seen it um, pop up on other sites as well. I have heard rumor of a smaller version of this deck coming out. If you happen to know anything about that, please like let me know because that is something um, that I would be interested in because this deck is so huge that like three cards fit on my reading table. Continuing on, I have the Soul Cards Tarot and the Soul Cards Tarot is by Christine Fredheim, Karina Mika, and Eva Eklund. I hope I'm saying all of your names right. I had filmed actually, a, I had filmed a review of this deck, but then I looked at it and I watched it back and I didn't feel like my camera did the cards justice, so I didn't end up posting it. I didn't really think that it would be, you know, much interest to anyone um, because I wasn't happy with how it turned out. So it has flowers on the back and this deck comes in a couple of variants. I believe there's a pink version of this deck as well, but I got black and gold. It has this kind of rosy gold um, matte edging on it. And this is a very matte black and gold with gold, every card metallic, 
This deck is stunning. When you read this deck under candlelight, it is particularly stunning. But as you can tell, it does not show up, at least for me, very nicely on film. Like there's no way to get that to look as good as it does in person. Um, this is a really nice pip deck. Um, the one thing that I am not in love with about this deck is that the um, cardstock is extremely fingerprint prone. I'm not sure if the pink one would have the, the issue to the same extent, um, but that rose petal, um, you know, style can come with the issue of fingerprinting. Um, but the matte gilding has stood up really well. Um, and again, it looks like really, really stunning. Um, I don't have any uh, black and gold decks. I know there are some other black and gold tarot decks out there. Um, this is the only one in my collection and it's really beautiful. The Soul Cards Tarot Deck. Continuing on to a out of print, um, out of print deck. This is the Buckland Romani Tarot by Raymond Buckland with artwork by Lisanne Lake. Here's the back. And this is a Roma flag, a version of the Roma flag where blue um, represents the sky, green, um, the earth, and the wagon wheel there. And this deck um, is the, this is the first edition of this deck. I lucked in, I really feel like I lucked into this one. Um, I found it on eBay. And it was published in, I believe, 2001, but it has been out of print for quite some time. Um, if you look online, sometimes versions in different languages will show up. I'm also really, um, th this deck I, I really like have a connection with and love working with this deck. And the guidebook is also um, excellent because what um, Raymond Buckland does um, in his guidebook which I had never had a guidebook before that did this, he would, instead of kind of giving meanings, he would kind of ask questions, you know, about the, um, about the card. And so he would say like, you know, here, here's this one. Um, you know, what's the, what's the relationship of, of this man to whoever's horse is on the other side of the water, for example, right? And he would, he would, give these kind of questions that, that prompt you to think about the actual imagery in the card itself as opposed to just kind of rote meanings of well the three of wands is this or the four of cups is that and I really like that um, approach so that is a favorite in my collection for sure um, very um, special deck um, the Buckland Romani Tarot by Raymond Buckland with art by Lee Sand Lake the next deck I'm going to show, I've shown many times before, another favorite. I feel like I say that a lot, um, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, and this is a deck that is now in print, actually. You can get a newer printing of this deck from Metonymy Press, um, and that's Thea's Tarot. This is the back, but I have the version that was printed in 1984, and my deck is in order right now. Um, so this is by Ruth West and this was my first um, definitely like overtly queer deck um, I fell in love with it immediately I do a lot of readings for myself with this deck um, it you know I love the art style of paper uh, paper cutting I love a black and white deck um, and I'm really glad actually to have scored one of the 1984 decks but I'm also really glad I have to say like I'm really glad that um, this deck is is available again because I think that it is a deck that might be an important deck for a lot of other people besides just me um, it's a really affirming and supportive deck um, and I really love this one Thea's Tarot by Ruth West next up another deck that I have an indie version of but is now available in a more mass market way and that is the Antique Anatomy Tarot Ephemera Edition by Claire Goodchild of 
Black of the Moon. And if you watched my Oracle deck video, you know I have several of her Oracle decks as well. Um, this deck went mass market in 2019. I don't have and have never seen in person the mass market edition. I believe that the back is different um, if you buy it in mass market, but there's a beautiful looking guidebook that comes with the mass market version, and this one didn't come with any. I'm almost tempted to buy the market one just because I want to see the book. Um, but this is a, you know, this deck is like a old apothecary. Um, lots of skeletons, um, lots of flowers, vials, bones. And I read this deck as a pip deck. And I just really like the style. Um, and it goes well with a lot of Oracle decks, um, including but not limited to other Oracle decks um, that Claire has created as well. So, and this is a deck that I've worked with a lot. Um, so this is the Antique Anatomy Tarot Ephemera Edition by Claire Goodchild at Black and the Moon. With a currently tough to close tuck box. There we go. Antique Anatomy Tarot. Let me just have stuff on the back. Continuing on, another deck that has gone, I believe, um, to Mass Market Publisher, um, and that's Our Tarot by Sarah Shipman. This deck features um, photograph art, which is generally not a thing that I go for. You'll see in my collection, I don't have a lot of photo collage um, art. But um, I was drawn to this deck because it features um, women from history. And so I was really interested to see um, the guidebook and, and learn about all of these women. And it's interesting because I think that, um, you know, Sarah does a good job of explaining, like, these are not necessarily figures that she's presenting as, like, feminist icons or, like, heroes or, or the bet you know, the best in all cases, um, but she has represented um, quite a lot of diversity of, of women historically. Um, the time scale covered is, is very broad. Um, some folks will know because I've mentioned it who knows how many times that one of my favorite authors of all time is Octavia Butler. One of my favorite um, novels all, of all time is Octavia Butler um, and her trilogy, The Lilith Brood. Um, which was originally published as the Xenogenesis Trilogy. So when she had a card featuring um, this beautiful picture, um, I had to um, get it. I'm just going to pause for a second. Um, I thought my computer was plugged in and it's not, so I'm just going to plug in so that I don't lose you. One second. Okay, so we are now plugged in. Um, I may or may not edit that out, we'll see. Uh, so, where was I? Octavia Butler is incredible. And so is this deck, um, The Hour Tarot by Sarah Shipman. It's a deck that I've struggled with a little bit, um, in part because I know um, some of the women so much better than some of the others, which I've never heard of. Um, that the association between the, the figure um, that Sarah has chosen for each card and the card meaning is not like always readily apparent to me if, I do, if I'm not familiar with the person. Um, but it's one that I think with some studying on my part, um, I would do better with. Um, and this one, I like that um, the back of the deck says that some decks may be stacked against us, but this deck is ours. I like that. Okay, continuing on. A beautiful, beautiful deck. And this is another one that I've made a special box um, for it because it comes in a much larger box, which of course I kept, um, but just it overhangs off of my shelf so much um, that I wanted to have another deck. 
uh, another box, excuse me, to, to keep this stunning deck in. A favorite. And that's The Dust to Onyx by Courtney Alexander. This is the first edition. This is the, the big one. The travel size of this deck just came out. Um, also beautiful. It has a matte gold edging that is incredible. And it has um, some kind of spot gloss on the deck, which is something I had never seen before. Um, and metallic gold as well. And it's a collaged and painted deck that my webcam and bad lighting is not going to do justice to. But this deck, the depth of this deck, and for the court cards, um, Courtney has included um, the eyes of um, different um, like public figures and celebrities. Um, and the guidebook talks about um, those choices also with reference to um, their astrological signs and how that relates to um, the position in the court that she, she has put them so much in this deck. It is incredible. It is truly incredible. And the camera cannot do this deck justice. I feel really lucky to have this, um, this deck in my collection. And I have actually a, um, a framed postcard of um, one of the cards from this deck um, in my room as well which came with um, which came with my copy of the deck really really beautiful um, and just the quality of this deck the card the card stock the the metallic the edging the the gloss the the incredible guidebook um, the the box that it comes in dust onyx um, is truly is unparalleled in my mind a, a stunning stunning deck Next, I have uh, two iterations or, or versions or editions of a deck that many will recognize. And this is the deck um, that is one of the top of the list to work with more in um, 2020. And that's Benabel Wen's Spirit Keeper's Tarot. And I also have the Spirit Keeper's Tarot Vitruvian edition, which I ordered at the very last second after I got the first um, the first one, I didn't think I would get the Vitruvian, but it's stunning and they are sufficiently different um, that I had wanted to. And I keep all of these things that Benabel sent with them, like a, a magnet and a sticker inside. So for my, um, my original, my first edition, I have number 28 of a thousand. And this deck is a beautiful matte cardstock with a gold gilding. I keep this deck in order when I'm not using it. I keep most of my decks in order when I'm not using them. Um, Benabel's um, ink pen line art is really beautiful. You know I love a black and white deck. Um, and this deck really um, I think intimidated me at first in part because uh, there's so much material that comes with it so folks who have this deck you know will know that it's it's not just this <laughs> that you get with the spirit keepers tarot there's a there's a very large guidebook called the book of maps that is a you know novel sized uh, good length novel sized um, book and then there's also a medium white book as well so there's like a lot of material and i think that that can be um, daunting right um, but i found that what i had to do to get to know the spirit keepers tarot and get to work with it was to just like put that aside and i've read chunks of the text but i haven't read them all the way through um, and for the vitruvian i actually kept um, benabel um, anointed them with oil and and sealed that anointing with a um magnet and so I cut out that piece of the plastic that had the anointing oil on it and the magnet and kept it 
So my Vitruvian Edition tarot smells really good. <laughs> um, and again, you get the booklet for the Vitruvian Edition. All of the decks were named, and mine is Holiveria. And so this one I also have kept in order. Um, this one has a different back than the original edition. It has the same gold gilding, but this one has the sepia tone as opposed to just the black and white. And some of the cards are actually substantively changed, like the imagery is substantively changed. And so I do think that this deck is absolutely readable straight out of the box. If you are someone who knows Rider Waite Smith symbolism, if you are somebody who has worked with Marseille decks even, um, I'm not sure about if you know um, the Thoth system, though I know that that influence is definitely in here. Um, you know, I don't know about the, you know, the entry coming from that angle because it's just not one that I come from or ever will, to be quite honest. Um, but I could really just set it aside and read the, um, the deck without getting hung up on all of the ample guidebook information. And once I let myself do that and give myself permission to work with the deck just um, as it is, then I got um, some great readings with, with the Spirit Keepers Tarot. But this year for 2020, I really want to um, go through. There are some ritual coloring activities and there's, there's a lot of reading material that goes with this deck that I would like to really get into because, um, you know, it's there and it, it's part, it's a part of the deck and, and I think you know if I'm getting good readings from it just without reading you know all all of that material imagine the readings that um, could come with this deck um, if I did do all of the reading so I'm looking forward to doing that and I think this deck is just incredible and I feel really happy to have it in my collection so you've been with me for an hour I am on the last little section of decks, I promise. Um, so this one you've seen on my channel before. It's a, it's a um, recent addition to my collection, the Algenblick Tarot by Shannon Loftus. This is out of print. I got it from the creator. Um, though she is working on a new edition of the Algenblick Tarot. So if this is a deck that appeals to you, um, you know, look up her website and keep an eye out for that. It is the first um, and only square deck that I've ever had in my collection. Um, I've always like looked at square decks and kind of wondered about them, um, but I hadn't seen one that really appealed to me until I saw this one. And there was a first printing of this deck and I missed out on it. I never thought I would get to own it. And then um, Shannon kind of assessed if there was enough interest for a second printing and I was right on top of it saying, yeah, I would love to buy one. Um, and so when there was enough interest there was a second run of the deck and I got one. I love this deck um, for readings, but I also love this work, um, this deck for meditation as well. I think as a, you can just step right into these cards and the, the landscapes um, are so evocative of the, of the uh, meaning of the card that they're associated with. When I was a tarot beginner, a deck like this would have just terrified me. And frankly, like I missed the first print run because I was scared of it. Like I didn't know how I could possibly work with a deck like this. But now it's, this deck is, is one of my favorite 2019 additions um, to my collection for sure. It's an incredible deck. Um, yeah, so do keep your eyes out um, open for the um, next edition of this um, if it's a deck that appeals to you and there's a nice thorough guidebook that came with mine um, which is great because it tells you where all those scenes are from um, which I really like okay continuing on um, I am on to the last four decks the next two decks are similar and by the same creator, one of my favorite um, deck creators. And I made similar bags for these and you may know which decks I'm talking about because I think I've shown these bags before. And so this is the Prism of Visions um, by James R. Eads. If you don't follow James R. Eads on Instagram and you like um, Instagram 
get on that <laughs> because his page is amazing. Um, I love James R. Eats' work. This deck has a guild, a silver gilding, and it has an eye on the back. It's not quite reversible, but it's reversible enough that if I find if you want to read with reversals, the eye being slightly reversed is not something that you will notice. The major arcana have these frames around them. And the minor arcana, something that is really interesting about this deck that some of you may be aware of, is that it has a panorama built in. So if you lay out all of the swords, um, minor cards, for example, in order, they make a, a, a connecting um, scene and tell a story. And so each suit does that. It's like a, it reminds me of a, like Van Gogh a little bit. Um, I just love the art style so much. And every edition of this deck um, comes with one um, kind of extra special um, card that is different in each edition. And I think my edition is the second edition of the Prism of Visions anyway. Um, my card that I got was the gift. Um, and I know there are a couple of others. And it's one of the few decks that I actually, when I work with this deck, do um, keep the extra card in. And I quite like the guidebook for this. Um, the way that the guidebook talks about, I think it was the wand suit in particular, like really um, stood out to me. I also got, this deck is actually an earlier deck than the Prisma Visions, but I missed out the first version, so I got it later. And that's the Light Visions Tarot. And so this version of the deck is the same artwork. It has a gold gilding. The back is completely different. Um, but this is a monochrome, kind of purpley and ivory version. And this one, my extra card was the orchard, which I also um, keep in. And this deck, well, the Prisma Visions actually, because the Prisma Visions is the one I saw first. This was one of the first independently published decks that I saw um, that I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> I bet people collect tarot and maybe I'll end up being one of those people because I really need to have that deck in my life. Um, and then the Prisma Visions and this one a little bit less because I've had it less long, but, um, these have been some of my most used decks for sure. Um, I think that they're just incredible. So that is the Light Visions Tarot. My last two decks, my last two decks are both decks that I bought at a shop in Toronto actually called Hermit's Lamp. Um, the first one is the Orbifold Tarot which is by Michael Bridge Dixon. And it comes in two sizes, this deck. Um, this one is the mini. And um, Michael Bridge Dixon, who created this Orbifold Tarot, um, he has a really good YouTube channel. So look him up um, where he talks about um, this deck and also um, numerology and, and tarot reading. It comes with a little fold out and this deck is a teeny tiny, it comes edged in black, um, a matte black, which is really nice. Um, so it's an elementally based deck, just based in color and shape. And I, so I read this deck as a pip deck. Those are some of the majors. Um, and when you get into the minors, I'm not going to show you know, all of them, but um, you know the, the fire suit is, is red, for example. And you see the growth of the suit as you go from four to five to six and so on. Um, it's a really interesting one to read with. It looks beautiful. Um, all laid out on a table and I, I got to play with them both at the shop um, when I saw them it probably isn't a deck honestly um, I had seen the deck around it probably isn't a deck that I would have necessarily bought 
um, had I not gotten to go um, to the shop and see it in person because in person it's a really cool deck and the mini stood out to me as the one that I would like um, so I added that one to my collection finally we are at the very end the last tarot deck in my collection is the luminous void tarot by Laura Zespan this is another deck um, that I added to my collection this year also purchased at the hermit's lamp in Toronto check it out if you're in the area and haven't been there it's a great spot this is another uniquely shaped deck it has metallic on the back metallic gold and a matte gold edge and it's a watercolor painted deck And when I first saw this deck, I thought it might be a little teeny tiny bit creepy. And it might be, but it is a really great reader in my experience. I had to kind of practice to figure out how I was going to shuffle this one. But once I got it, it shuffles well. And again, this is another one where just um, everything about the production of this deck, you know, the, the cardstock and the foil and the, and the edging and, and everything is just so, so excellent and so great to just hold, you know, this deck that I've really enjoyed working with this year and I'm going to continue to enjoy working with it into the new year. So that is the Luminous Void Tarot created by Laura Zespan. And that, plus the first video, is the entirety of my tarot collection as of December 31st, 2019, 51 different decks. And that's all the tarot decks I've ever owned. So I do know a few new ones will be coming to me in 2020. Um, thank you um, to my discovery of Kickstarter, um, but I don't anticipate growing the collection much in 2020 since I'm going on the depth here. Um, I'm looking forward to working with my tarot collection going into the new year as always uh, i'm off now that's it's the 31st after all to do my end of the year um, new year's reading for myself uh, and then to celebrate um, the changing of the year so um, thank you for staying with me especially if you stuck with me this long my goodness um, <laughs> and um, i wish you all very very much a happy and joyful 2020 and I will see you all in the new year have a great night um, or morning or afternoon or whatever it is when you're watching this video and a amazing 2020 thanks for watching bye